on today's show, could Jackson Merrill fill the void at third base while Manny Machado recovers from surgery? As well as looking ahead at the 2025 free agent class and whether or not the Padres are playing the long game this offseason, winning until that time. What it says about the future and more. Let's get into it. You are locked on Padres. Your daily San Diego Padres podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Lockdown Padres Podcast, which is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day for Tuesday, February 20th. That's right, the big 2-0, ladies and gentlemen. As always, I'm your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You may be familiar with my baseball-related work over at Just Baseball. Go check that out. I have a cool new project in the works for them, too. But if you want to just read my written work about sometimes not the Padres, but mostly the Padres, go check that out, as well as some of my regular entertainment work. You can find that at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres or Lockdown Padres on YouTube if all you want is the dang Padres stuff. I totally understand if that's the case. It makes sense. That's why you're here. Totally makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm a, we're all good. We're all good. We're all good. <laughs> On today's episode, guys, we're going to be talking about a little bit of a listener question that I got regarding Jackson Merrill, as well as looking ahead to the free agent class for next year. And I feel like there are a couple of takeaways from that class and some little bit of a... Just things to keep in mind, I think, because I think that it does have a huge impact on what the Padres are doing right now, what they may be doing with their prospects, what they may be doing with Hassan Kim. I think next year's free agent class is really interesting in a lot of ways. So that's what today's episode is, guys. And today's episode is not just that. It is also brought to you by FanDuel. We love FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers join today and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5, $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And let's let's just get right into it, ladies and gentlemen, because yesterday I actually received a little bit of a, a response, a little bit of a, of a DM, one might say, um, asking about, or actually it wasn't a DM, you tweeted at me, my mistake, um, asking about Jackson Merrill. And I thought that it was an interesting question and I didn't want to wait for next week. One, because I'm trying to come up for content for my show. And number two, because since you asked it yesterday, I didn't want to wait, make you wait too long. My man Christian White, at Chris White 471 on Twitter says, question for the podcast. Should Merrill play third base while Machado is still recovering from the elbow? This way, we have a lefty bat in the lineup still if we get outfield help. So, first of all, I think that you meant to say, like, you know, with Merrill, you get a lefty in the lineup and whatnot. I, th- I believe that that's what you're trying to say, not with Manny. Um, that's a little bit separate. But it's an interesting idea. It's an interesting idea. I would say, though, that the question... The problem with this is that on top of the fact that we haven't really been getting any sign that Jackson Merrill has been practicing at third base, he also literally hasn't before. Not really, at least not in the minors. Uh, He's played mostly at shortstop in the minors, and he's played a little bit in left field. He's been doing a little bit of DH, and they've been working him out separately in the outfield and whatnot. You know, they've been doing that. I think they're going to be doing that in spring training. All sorts of stuff. He's ready to play wherever, apparently. That's what the Padres are kind of saying. So given that they're saying he could play wherever, then third base sounds like a decent idea. I think it could be, but I want to be careful with making this guy move around too much. <laughs> like, it feels like we're asked, the Padres have been asking him to play, like, every position, whether it be left field, second base, shortstop, center field, and now potentially third base. I'm just wondering what that does for the development of a player. Maybe I'm not smart enough. Maybe I'm not informed enough to know about that because I don't know if a five-position player who's still trying to just make the major leagues, if that's necessarily the correct development route to go. Um I would say that's an issue. And again, it doesn't seem like he's played a lot of third base um, whatsoever. But it would be cool because it would give you another route um, to get Jackson Merrill in the opening day lineup, at least for a little bit. And it would be guaranteed just just a little bit if you were to play third base while Manny is recovering. And, you know, shortstop, granted, it's not like shortstops have never transitioned to third. You know, Alex Rodriguez being one of the best examples, right? I'm pretty sure... Alex, was it Alex Bregman? Um, Manny Machado was originally, or at least wanted to play shortstop for a while, and then he went to third base because he was, frankly, a lot better there. Um, It's not impossible, for sure. The other point, though, for why I don't think that this would happen is because Eggy Rosario is still on the roster, and I think that that is a player, at least I'm pretty sure he's still on the roster, right, guys? 
right? Am I crazy or did they? He says he's at the spring training or whatnot, or am I like getting this totally wrong? I'm pretty sure he is, but whatever. Eggy Rosario is another player that they could potentially call up, and that would be, in my opinion, more strategic if they were to bring him to third base if he's ready, assuming that this isn't one of those lost prospects that's just like he just doesn't have at the end. Um, I could see that working out because then you would start the clock a little bit later. Not to be a jerk, but that's how teams, I think, are going to be viewing this, right? And I know that the Padres haven't really been doing service time manipulation at all, but if you were to do that, if you were to wait a little bit, it would make a little bit of sense that way because if Jackson Merrill is this potential star caliber player that the Padres think he could be, then you'd want to be able to keep him as long as you want, especially given all the roster constraints right now, given the fact that you have so much money going out that we don't know exactly when it'll be free up to potentially make a splurge on a Jackson Merrill type or any of the other prospects they have, and that includes the pitching, right? So that's that's where I'm at when it comes to um, Jackson Merrill potentially playing third. And again, not to be a jerk, I'm just saying what teams think about. And until that rule about the service time gets changed, that is something that needs to be kept in mind for sure. Whether or not I endorse it, hey, look, I'm just saying what might help the Padres, what can I say? Um, hopefully, though, that doesn't happen. I want my guy to get paid. You know what I'm saying? I, I, want, I want my dude to get paid, come up and be awesome. That would be great. But, um, again, Christian, I think it's a fair question. I think that Merrill at third base would just be fascinating. Maybe they'll work him out there. I wouldn't be surprised if we get like some reports of that. It's this is why I think the spring training this off scene has has been the most exciting since I've been hosting the show because while yes there have been bigger additions made you had Bogarts last year you had the year when it was Darvish Kim and Snell uh, joining the team you had the the Soto full Soto season you know the whole the whole you know core four that they had last year the big four whatever you want to call it sorry to the Yankee fans out there you know what I mean um, whatever it is uh, this one to me is just more interesting because there's less known about the Padres this year, which just from a person who covers things and likes stories and is a writer and all, I find infinitely more fascinating uh, to me um, as of late, just because, you know, I'm used to the big moves. Hey, I remember my first year here. It was like, hey, we, we Tatis again. Can he make the leap? And then Fam, and then Grisham and then uh, Chris Paddock his second year, all, all, all sorts of stuff. And Zach Davies and can the Nelson Lamette be good? I remember when that stuff was exciting, but to me, the prospect stuff, the unknown about the outfield is what's so interesting. So thanks again for the, cr the question, Christian. Um, I'm really curious to see how long Machado's out too, by the way. I saw him swinging it pretty good the other day. Um, now, granted, it's that shouldn't be surprising. They, It's not like they said he wouldn't be able to swing the bat. It's just that he's not going to be able to play third for a little bit. Um, but in terms of just swinging, he looked really good. And I think that there's reason to believe that Machado will bounce back this year. I'm not as confident in him as I am with someone like Bogarts and someone like Tatis, especially. But even still, Machado is still great. Over at JustBaseball.com, they recently put out the site's you know top 10 first baseman. I didn't have any input on this. This isn't my jurisdiction, I guess, with them. But I'm about to sneeze. Ugh, I hate, don't you hate when that happens when you're about to sneeze? You got to hold it. Um, that they put Manny Machado at, at fourth among top 10 third basemen, which I think is really, really great. Um, I still think he could be awesome. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to see, man. But Jackson Merrill, with his positional versatility, I don't know if you want to be pushing him in too many different directions, having him thinking about too many things. He's still just a kid at 20 years old. You know what I mean? And then number two, I think that Eggy Rosario might be someone they might want to try there first. At least that's just me. I could be wrong. Because especially with the positional change, with Hassan Kim going to shortstop now, that seems to indicate that they're not going to be doing him um, at third base. Right? They're not going to be putting him there. So that leaves a question now. Now that now that they moved uh, Kim off of second base into short and then Xander to second base, that creates another question. So thank you for bringing it up, Christian, because it's true. I didn't even think about this. I didn't even think about what this means for the team going forward in terms of Machado that first month or couple weeks or whatever it's going to be that they don't have him. So that'll be something to keep an eye on for sure. But something else I need everyone to keep an eye on. This is important ladies and gentlemen, is because when it comes to winning a championship, you need the drive, you need the passion, you need the patience, something that manager, uh, or general manager AJ Peller should show a little bit more of if you catch my drift. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. The folks over at eBay, they are covering you when it comes to your ride or die. When it comes to what you need to take it all to the top, to be the best that no one ever was, eBay Motors has you covered with your vehicles, of course, ladies and gentlemen. Brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride going, is all these qualities I just mentioned. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle. 
and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much more. Whether you're into speed power style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Boom. How about that? Oh, yeah. Don't worry. And they have this like little system that'll tell you what's good for your car and what is compatible with your vehicle. So don't worry if you order the the XLR8, you know, 28 two cv wheels and then actually you needed the two vd wheels i don't i don't i don't know cards but ebay motors does it they keep you covered folks so with all the parts you need at all the prices you want it's easy to turn your car into the mvp like no one ever was ladies and gentlemen keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers though check it out And we're back here, ladies and gentlemen, the Lockdown Padres podcast. And when I say eligible only U- U.S. customers, don't worry. I'm just, I'm just letting you all know. No, no shade whatsoever to any of my international listeners. All the millions and millions of you out there, of course. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the free agent class for next year. Because I actually think that, I think too long didn't read of this version of this is just the free agent class next year is really, really deep. Um, and for perspective, the Padres are about like 166 million right now, and they say that the cutoff is expected around 200, which is still a lot. So nobody freak out. Um, but I understand some people wondering, like, well, with the new ownership group, with the new interim chairman in Kutsenda, who we talked about yesterday, where it's like, hey, they didn't sound the same when it came to you know having that passion and trying to win a title. We'll have to see. Don't get me wrong. But assuming the team goes up to 200, I think this is really important to keep in mind, is the free agent class for next year. And I don't think that based on listeners, based on just comments, just on the general vibe, the general thought among the baseball community, I don't think too many people are looking at the Padres right now, our Padres fans being like, wow, they are so ridiculous, how are they not spending? Don't get me wrong, they haven't had the best offseason, but it's it's for different reasons. It's not like, say, the the Orioles before they got Corbin Burns, where it was like, why are you guys spending so much on Craig Kimbrell? And then you're not, you know, you have so much money to spend and you haven't done anything, right? Teams like that, I get it. The Cubs are another team that people complain about. With the Padres, it's like, well, we knew this was coming. And it's really tough. And I think by all things considered, they got a decent return from Soto. I like Jerickson Profar on one year, $1 million, right? Like, I know he was rough last year, but at least you have a vet and someone who inexplicably seems to play a lot better with the Padres um, and just the best smile on the East Coast. Or, I'm sorry, West Coast. My apologies, folks. Whew, I got a little carried away there from my own home environment, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, so you have all of that. And I think that... As a result, yes, it has looked bad from the perspective of, and I get this message a lot, and if you are currently typing about to send it, you can go ahead and send it anyway, but I get a lot of the comments that are like, you're losing 15 plus wins of replacement because you lost Soto, you lost Snell, and you lost Hayter. I get that. Um, I totally get that. And then some people who are really down on Xander are like, look, this guy's only going to be a two-win player next year or whatever, right? But even still, I do think there is more coming. One, maybe one random sort of bat that we're not even talking about right now. Michael A. Taylor would potentially make a lot of sense. He could play a lot of defense. Maybe he has an uptick in his offense a tiny bit. I don't think he could be any worse than Trent Grisham. And if you get him on a one-year deal for $6 million, I think that'd be perfect. Adam Duvall, a little bit more offensive upside. Not the same defensive stuff. Those are two other players that I would look at. But it could be anyone. It could be anyone. And I think it's also important before we get into some of the players in this free agent class to remember that Extending Hassan Kim, if you were to do that, it then becomes impossible to get any new infielders for a long time, right? If you extend Hassan Kim and he's your shortstop or second base, whatever ends up happening. I know he's the shortstop right now. I'm just saying if anything were to change. Um, Then there's no possible way to get any of the following infielders that we're going to talk about or have a lot more fluidity with your lineup. Uh, because you'd have Manny for the next, like, 10 years. You have Bogarts for the next 10 years. You have Tatis for a while. Assuming you extend Kim, you have him for, like, let's say six, seven years. I don't think he'll get, like, a 10-year contract or anything like that. And then you have Cronenworth still for another six. So as a result, you better like the infield because it ain't changing whatsoever if you do this, which is one of the reasons 
Another reason I want to bring up for why I'm a little bit scared at extending Ha Sung Kim. Would I have preferred to extend him over Cronenworth? Of course. Would I have preferred to extend him and then maybe instead of giving out the huge contract to Bogarts, you just say, we'll extend Kim. That means Kim, Darvish, Manny. Or I'm not Kim, Darvish, Manny. Kim, Manny, Tatis. Maybe that could make a lot of sense. Maybe you didn't extend Manny. I would be totally cool with that because then the options were, are more open. But given what we have right now, I think it's important to note that's it. And for a club that hasn't won more than 89 wins since AJ Prowler took over, I just don't know if this is the core you want to just fully tie your entire wagon to. There are worse cores to tie your wagon to. There are worse ways to go about your business when it comes to free agency and all that. Don't get me wrong. Let me be very clear. I do not think the Padres are nearly as bad of a position as some other teams. But, again, things change. You know what I mean? Manny Machado is probably going to get worse at some point. Fernando Tatis Jr. is the only one that we're like, cool, because he's still in his young phase. So in theory, he hasn't even hit his prime yet, right? But then Bogarts, then Darvish, and Musgrove, and all these things. So it becomes an issue. So that's why I want to bring that up. And now let's get into some of the free agents, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that there's some really fun fan fiction uh, talk that we're going to be doing right now. And just talking about kind of, if you look at the free agent class, it's crazy next year. And I think that there's a decent chance... A decent chance, not a great chance, because this has been reported about. But given that the Padres have a lot and they've or have spent a lot, and given that they don't necessarily have the trust, apparently, of Major League Baseball, if you go look up the Aaron Judge story, uh, to be able to exceed that limit much more, I think that it's worth saying that they are working on a nice, solid budget, right? But what if they're trying to do what the Dodgers did this year? Well, last year, the LA Dodgers barely did anything anything in free agency they might have added a reliever that i can't remember and then they added jason hayward and jd martinez both of which they basically got for nothing um jd martinez was really good for the team last year really 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 good and i think this has been a common misconception among padres fans is that all they do is buy don't get me wrong that is an enormous part of it but they're very good at getting guys on short little deals and just kind of maximizing value and saying, let's have some some intermediates that are thrown around there. That way we have some areas of our team, if things change, if players get worse that we didn't see coming, then we can change our tune a little bit. J.D. Martinez had a 135 WRC plus last year at DH. And very weirdly is still a free agent. I think the reason he's still a free agent is because, one, he's a DH. Number two huge spike in his strikeout rate last year. And I think a lot of people are like, okay, we're going to get him, we're going to bring him in, and then this will be the year that he finally falls off. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mind taking a swing on J.D. Martinez, but there is a vibe that's like, this just screams peak Dodgers BS, where he's going to sign with another team and only hit like 10 home runs, as opposed to the 33 he hit last year. But huge um, spike in his strikeout rate, career 24.7 and 31.1%. Anyway, I'm getting too much into deep in the weeds on this. And then Jason Hayward was a two-win player too. So what if the Padres are waiting for next year? Well, next year, every single position, with the exception, in my opinion, of second base, is fascinating. If you look at catcher, there's a lot of stop gaps. If something were to happen, let's say for the Padres, let's say if it's true, my theory is that they are waiting and they're doing what the Dodgers did this past year, and that next year will be the year that they might potentially splash a little bit more. How they could do that, I don't fully know. I think that it becomes really complicated because of all the players you already have extended, which is why I keep screaming to people. It is not good to take away your flexibility um, of your entire roster. But alas, let's just keep talking. Um, guys like Elias Diaz, Yasmani Grandal, Danny Jansen, Travis Darno, Jan Gomes, Francisco Mejia, Austin Barnes, Omar Narvaez, Carson Kelly, James McCann, Martin Maldonado, Tomas Nito. No one that is thrilling. But these guys could potentially be stopgaps. Um, potentially, if, say, they're really bullish on bringing up Ethan Salas faster. Or if Luis Campisano really doesn't have the defense and they're worried about him, there are some decent catchers on here that you could potentially get as being the backup or have a two catcher thing going, similar to how they went with Gary Sanchez. But that's not even the most exciting part. First base to me is what's fascinating. And first base, in my opinion, is why A.J. Preller has been so frustrating. Because when you look at some of these players that are available, and I'm not even talking about just the, the golden egg ones here, it makes you wonder, why did you extend Jay Cronenworth? Because now you would have nowhere to put these guys. So unless something changes with Jay Cronenworth, 
you're not getting any of these guys. But check this out. Paul Goldschmidt, P. Alonzo, Reese Hoskins has an opt-out. So if he was to have a good year with the Brewers, he could potentially opt out and get a longer-term deal with another team. And not even, in my opinion, a, the type of deal that would be you know, massive. I bet you he could just get like a four-year pretty good deal somewhere else, right? Totally could see that happening um, with Reese Hoskins. Anthony Rizzo has a club option with the Yankees, so that one's a little bit weird. I don't know if it would be fully available. Josh Bell? Real question. Who would you rather have? Josh Bell for basically like nothing, I imagine, by the end of next year? Maybe on like a one- or two-year deal? He he bounced back in a big way um, for the Marlins once he got traded there, so maybe he still has something, but whatever. You don't want Josh Bell? Well, check this out. Dari, wait, hold on. Did I already say Pete Alonzo? Um, Christian Walker is another one. Perhaps the single most underrated player in baseball. Hits for a lot of power, has a great glove, has won a gold glove. You could potentially get him, dare I say, for less than the money you maybe gave Jay Cronenworth, though. Maybe not for less than what you gave Jay Cronenworth, but um, Christian Walker could potentially be your future first baseman. These are just some players, guys. These are some players. And we're going to keep talking about some of the other free agents available to just hammer home my point about next year's free agent class and why that might be the area that they spend on. Hey, maybe they move... Maybe some of these position players, by the way, they move them around and say some of these guys could be our DH, i.e. maybe P. Alonzo is a first base slash DH guy. You know, all these sort of things. I think there's plenty of combinations when it comes to first base since the defense isn't exactly why they're being sought after since defense at first base is, doesn't seem to be measured as being quite as important as other positions. But anyway, before we continue talking, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about who we talked about at the beginning of the dang show. That's FanDuel. Of course, of course. You got to know by now, ladies and gentlemen. You got to know. We love FanDuel here at Lockdown Padres. And because you're listening, boy, do I have a deal for you folks. Look, football's done. Basketball is heating up. I hope you didn't watch that All-Star game because let me tell you, garbage. <laughs> I don't know what was worse. Madam Weber, the All-Star game. I actually genuinely don't know. Um, get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers. $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's right, $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and much, much more. Really cool over at FanDuel. And again, I'm telling you, bet the over on some of Victor Webanyama's points. I feel like they, they haven't quite caught up to it. That might be what I'd look into, but... So all sorts of stuff, and we've got March Madness stuff coming up soon. So don't worry, FanDuel's got you covered for all your sports betting needs. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. And shoot your shot always, by the way. That person you like, go. Go send a message. Be very kind. Be very kind. So if they don't respond, it's like, well, I was kind. You know? Do that. And also shoot your shot with FanDuel, guys. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. Sheesh, could it be could not be me um, giving life advice through an ad read. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here at Lockdown Padres, your first team, first listen every day, and first team, of course, because your Padres fans, they, they matter the most. They're number one in the entire league. Everyone knows this. Over at second base is one of the positions. So it, it's actually funny when you read from MLB.com. They say Hassan Kim mutual option, but of course Hassan Kim. I don't know how exactly he's going to be entering free agency. Is it at shortstop? Part of me actually wonders. Conspiracy hobby. Let me put on my like a hat real quick. I don't have a tinfoil hat, so this random hat that I just found will do. I'm part of me is wondering like, is this also a little bit of a, a positional change? And it's it's Xander Bogarts being unselfish and maybe showing a little bit of an example. But tinfoil hat har- hobby is like, is there like a thing where they wanted to play shortstop because you probably will get more on the open market that way? Maybe. Maybe? Possible? Maybe? Especially because who are the shortstops next year? Check this out. Willie Adamas, Paul DeJong, Garrett Hampson, Joey Rendell, and Miguel Rojas has a club option. Now, as opposed to second base, there's Glaber Torres, Brandon Lowe, Whit Merrifield, Wilmer Flores, who's interesting. Jorge Polanco, who's also interesting. Depends on what kind of year he has. He has a club option. Brandon Jury, Adam Frazier. Not that there's like a ton of competition, don't get me wrong, but there's no competition in shortstop, in my opinion. Not nearly as much. So may- maybe part of me is wondering, this, this, this Kim, is this like a little bit of a let's get you some some more value by putting you at short? I don't know. I don't know if there's like agent stuff involved. Uh, probably not, but Tinfoil Hat Javi wanted to make an appearance. He's been very lonely lately. Hasn't made an appearance 
on this podcast in a while. Other positions, third base isn't worth talking about. That's the number one position where it's like not going to happen. There's some interesting players. You got Justin Turner. You got Eugenio Suarez. And the big one, Alex Bregman. Um, Alex Bregman is very interesting to me as a free agent in a, in a bunch of ways. I just don't know what's happening in Houston with him. And I'm curious to see if they're just going to do what they did with Correa a few years ago where they're just kind of like, all right, we'll try and offer you something, but if you don't, it's fine because we'll just replace him with some other guy that we like. Uh, in the case of Correa, it was Jeremy Pena, who's not as good as Correa, in my opinion, but has done a decent job, especially given the money and all those other contexts and whatnot. Um, over at third base also, um, Yohan Mancata has a club option. You remember when he was good? You remember when he looked like he was going to be awesome? I'm only bringing that up because just keep that in mind for wanting to extend every player who has a good season with us. I'm just saying, Yohan Mankata at one point was like a really good defensive player who was exciting everyone, and he was super young, and now I'm pretty sure he never plays anymore, and is one of the reasons the White Sox rebuilding efforts like fell apart. Yeah, this is a guy who had a five-win season in 2019, then won in 2020. He was, he was rough that year, but so was everyone else. Then a four-win season the year after that, and then 0.9 and then 1.2. And he's still just 28, so he just fell off a cliff, and I'm not sure why. Very weird player. Very weird player. But I'm just keep that in mind for just why you can't always, you know, assume that every player that looks good is going to stay that way. This isn't even just about Hassan Kim. This is about in general. Uh, one of the reasons I was against extending Manny last year, I just thought, you know, things change. Um, shortstop, I already mentioned. Um, second base, I already mentioned. Uh, outfield. <laughs> I think these are the positions now, now that we get into the outfield, where the Padres may actually flex their bank account a little bit and potentially go over the top um, because the outfield looks fun next year. And same goes for starting pitching. But in terms of the outfield, there's Soto, obviously. There's Alex Verdugo, who I actually think is going to have a decent season for the Yankees. Not be great, but I think he might have a decent season for the Yankees. Michael Conforto, my boy, <laughs> is a free agent next year. Um, yeah, yeah. Is there a world that let's let's say the outfield for the Padres doesn't go well in terms of whether they don't sign Taylor or Duvall or any other random bat and their prospects don't work out immediately? You bet your bottom dollar I will be hammering home bringing Michael Conforto on like a one year prove it deal. <laughs> yes, I will. I will be doing that. But there's also Jack Peterson has a mutual option. Tyler O'Neill could be interesting after this year. I actually think he might do well with the Red Sox. Joey Gallo is whatever. Um, Anthony Santander, who I'm going to be talking about hopefully soon with my buddy Connor Newcomb as a potential trade target. Lord Escuriel Jr. has an opt-out. Tiasker Hernandez is a free agent. Andrew McCutcheon, eh, he's probably going to be too old by then, but Kevin Kiermeyer, Max Kepler is a free agent. Harrison Bader, if you need a stopgap in center field. Mark Canna can hit a decent amount. Some fun players there, right? Like, there's some fun players there. Even Randall Gritchick as a mutual option. Like, there's all sorts of players that you could have used a lot more like this would have been a lot more fun and again this illustrates this is how weak the free agent class the number one hitter this year is cody bellinger and otani too but you get my point like outside of otani it's just cody bellinger meanwhile i've named like 10 players already that are better in my opinion and are i would bet a decent amount of money are going to be better from walker to um, paul goldschmidt to pete alonzo to who else we got here i, I mentioned bregman before Adamus, I think, could be better than than someone like uh, Cody Bellinger. And then Soto, Michael Conforto, Alex Verdugo. Yeah, I snuck that in there. Um, T. Oscar. There's some interesting names there. And even some interesting names at DH. So let's say the Padres do lock up Hassan Kim. And instead, the big thing that we can look forward to next year is getting a new DH. Well, there's two interesting players. Eloy Jimenez has a club option. And considering that that team is a mess, it wouldn't shock me if they actually kept him. Um, you know, you know what I mean? I think a lot of this would depend, Eloy. I mean, if he has a good season, but he's 27 years old and he still has crazy power upside. Um, the problem is that he never reaches it like ever. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he's good though. Cause he has cut down on strikeout rate basically every season, which is interesting. And the power is somewhat still there, but man, is he frustrating cause he gets hurt all the time. But like, if you look at him overall, look at the numbers. 105 WRC plus last year, 143 a year before, 100, 138 before that, and then 115 his rookie year when he hit 31 bombs at the age of 22. So he's interesting. I think that if he has a good year, 
I still think he could present, there could potentially be a club option where they opt out because this is the White Sox and they're cheap as heck, right? So it wouldn't totally shock me. But let me actually, hold on. Let me look at Eloy Jimenez right now. What is his contract? I'm just curious. He's got, yeah, he's in this like pre arbitration. So he's got club after, for 16 million. I see a world in which they let him go. I could genuinely see that, like where he has a decent season and they just let him go. But anyway, aside from him, there's also Marcelo Zuna, who, character aside, should he even be in the league? You know, there's some questions about that. He's had a lot of stuff off the field, but he's been a damn good hitter. Um, he was a damn good hitter last year. 139 WRC plus and hit 40 bombs. So that's another DH that I think. And I'm, it, I could be wrong, but I feel like I heard a rumor about Marcelo Zuna to the Padres once. I could be totally wrong on that, though. But anyway... That's another potential uh, position. And then starting pitching is the other thing, and I would argue the number one area where if you are worried about the Padres right now, don't be. Because on top of getting Michael King, who I think can be awesome, and the fact that you have now more time for the rest of your um, prospects to get ready, the free agent class next year suggests you could also get even more time if they're still not ready and or if they're just not as good as you thought, right? Because you're going to have Darvish, Musgrove for sure, you're going to have Michael King. Four and five is where it gets weird. Well, they can upgrade their big time, ladies and gentlemen. Garrett Cole has an opt-out. Probably going to be too much out of the price range of the Padres, even if he were to opt out. I don't think he will. He's got $36 million that's being owed to him. Like I, I'm pretty sure he's probably not going to opt out, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see, and I think he likes playing for the Yankees, too. Uh, just Justin Verlander has a vesting option. There's Max Scherzer. There's Corbin Burns. There's Clayton Kershaw, who's not coming here whatsoever. That would never happen, but then... Even more, check this out. Zach Wheeler, Max Freed, Shane Bieber, Walker Bueller, Nate Eovaldi with a vesting option. Robbie Ray has an, up, an opt-out. Alex Cobb, not a bad five-starter, especially at that age. Kyle Hendricks, Charlie Moore, and Freddie Peralta has a club option. Merrill Kelly has a, has a club option. And, if I'm, and Merrill Kelly was good, right? I always get the D-backs, like, second and third pitchers mixed up. Yeah, Merrill Kelly has been really effective for a couple of years now. So Merrill Kelly is a free agent. Merrill Kelly, everyone is, and that was, he's not even like the one of the 10 best starters available. Lucas Gila, if he for some reason has a good year, he has a player option. Sean Manaya, remember him? Michael Waka has a player option. Wade Miley has a mutual option. Frankie Montas has a mutual option. If he has a good year for the cards, watch out because that guy could be getting paid next year. Luis Severino, same thing for him if he has a good year. Um, James Paxson's probably a little bit too old and too injury prone. Jack Flaherty's in there too, but I don't think he's going to be anything. But you get my point. That's a crazy amount of starting pitching depth. And I think every single one of those players, almost every single one, makes more sense to me to shell out for than some of the free agents this year. You had Aaron Nola, who just resigned with the Phillies, but he's been Mr. Every Other Year. You never know what you're getting out of that guy. When you do get the good Aaron Nola, he's quite good, but you just never know what you're getting. So it's hard to invest in that guy. Thankfully, the Phillies did too. Um, Jordan Montgomery is this year's playoff hero, where I'd love to have him on a team, but it seems like he might get overpaid by a team. Blake Snell, he's great. He just won a damn Cy Young, but how is he going to age? You know what I mean? Now, don't get me wrong. That's um, I get the argument that it's like, well, every player is a risk. Every player is a risk of not aging well. I know, but there's something about Snell's walk rate and the fact that throughout his career, he's been a little bit more hit or miss based on availability. But there's that. So that that's my issue is that there's so many free agents available. I'm going to say them one more time with pitching. Um, Max Scherzer, Corbin Burns, Justin Verlander is a vesting option if he doesn't retire by then. Garrett Cole has an opt-out. Um, Zach Wheeler, Max Freed, Shane Bieber, Walker Bueller, Nate Eovaldi, Freddie Peralta, Robbie Ray, Alex Cobb, Charlie Morton. Um, Wade, Wade Miley is actually low-key pretty decent. Lucas Giolito. Frankie Montas and Severino could be two guys that elevate on this list a lot higher, depending on what the years that they have. I think they still have potential. Um, so again, heck, even John Means might be decent next year. The free agent class next year is fascinating. And in my opinion, that's why, for all the reasons I've talked about today, why don't freak out if the Padres aren't doing too much right now. Don't freak out if they don't extend Kim, because there's a lot of money to throw around next year. Um, and I think it, on players that, in my opinion, are a little bit more secure, a little bit more um, interesting and just have a higher upside, I think, than the guys that are available right now. So yes, the Padres haven't replaced everyone, but still keep that in mind. And keep this in mind in general. 
always look up the upcoming free agent classes. Look up who's available on the trade block. I know Randy Rosarina might be someone out there. I know Anthony Santander might be someone out there. But in general, this is why, with trade targets, and especially when it's a big free agent class, why I'm always saying I don't want to lock down the roster. I want to have flexibility if things change. Again, not to be mean, what if Hassan Kim isn't good this year? Let's say, for a second, Hassan Kim has a two-win season. And his bat regresses, and it's mostly just defense with him. Is everyone still going to be yelling at me about how you definitely want to extend him? Jake Cronenworth, same thing. Let, let me give that. And this is what I said before last year. Jake Cronenworth, I was optimistic and wrong, by the way, that he was going to bounce back last year in terms of the hitting. I thought he was going to be a lot better with the bat. And he wasn't. So before you give him that contract, wonder, especially when you have him under arbitration control, what if he doesn't get worse? Or what if he does get worse? Then all of a sudden you're locked into him for a long time. So I'm just bringing this up to illustrate you got to be patient. Obviously, Tatis guys are worth it, especially because they're young. And it's less likely they will get that much worse because of just age. And it won't just there won't be a drop off out of nowhere, in my opinion. Um, Just be careful with how much money you throw around and how many guys you want to extend long term. I really do think once you signed Bogarts, and especially once you extended Cronenworth, that extending Hassan Kim just doesn't make sense to me because of all of the reasons I've talked about today. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I want everyone to keep those guys in mind because, man, this is a fun class. It's just a fun class to talk about. And hopefully they don't all go to the Dodgers. Am I right? Ladies and gentlemen, that about does it for today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast, the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts from. Going to be talking with my buddy Ben Kaspik later this week, maybe even tomorrow, about our most hated Padres and Giants players. That's right, running back the bit that I did with Miller Thomas last week. That should be a fun little little side excursion. Going to be talking potentially with Lockdown Orioles host Connor Newcomb about Anthony Santander. Going to be going over the Padres lineup and, of course, covering whatever news pops up. And hopefully there's some news. I don't know what it'll be, but hopefully there's some. We're close. We're close to opening day, everybody. We're close. Hang in there. Just a little bit longer. Hang in there. Until next time, stay safe. And of course, stay faithful. My fire faithful homies. Take care.